Hello, this is Lori, and Jill has asked me to make a video showing you how I created a mask, like on this page that I did here with Carpe Diem, how I make the mask out of the elements that she has included in the kit. And while I use Artisan in order to make my pages, the theory behind making the mask and pulling in the elements and resizing them, etc., is the same no matter what program you use. So I'm going to close this one, and I've got a blank page open, and I'm going to use the same set, Carpe Diem, so that you can see exactly how I did the one that I had on that page. And I have a photo that I'm going to put in, a different photo, and I'm going to show you how I make it all fit. So first of all, I find elements with kind of ragged edges, something that's interesting, um, anything that is going to kind of give my mask texture. So I pull many different pieces and parts in, and as I go down through, I could, some of these masks here are in her extras package. I was working just with the single carpe diem when I did it. And I can bring over lots of different little bits and I can pull other little masks and stamps that are already in the kit. I'm just going to pull over a few more things so that I have what I need to work with. So I usually will also pull over something that maybe has a, a shape to it to, um, to give it a solid line around it. And I think those bits and pieces will work pretty well. So using these, I start out by making kind of a top and a bottom. I'm going to copy paste this and I'm going to pull it down and then this piece I'm going to put in between these two and I'm just going to extend it so that it goes the whole way. Now I don't care what these look like, they're going to be totally filled when I'm all is said and done with the photo. You won't see anything of how it, how it looks anymore. Um, you won't see any of the design on it, it will just totally be filled. So with this frame, I'm going to bring this to the front for the moment and put it over the top and have it hanging out. And then I'm going to duplicate that and offset it slightly. And then this piece right here has um, kind of a nice interesting line to it. I think I'll flip it around and pull it over like that. So each one of these pieces is, is um, contributing somehow to the overall design. Now some of these I want to change the opacity. So in my program I just go here and reduce that opacity to make it show through a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing but to a different degree with a few other pieces. And then others I'll leave totally solid. Now. I grab all of it and I flatten. And at this point you can see I haven't done anything with my photo. I'm just creating a basic, um, a basic mask. So now I'm going to go take my photo and say fill. Now rarely does it happen that everything fills perfectly the first time. And usually I have some more modifying I have to do to it. In this particular case it's not quite as rectangular as the photo is, so it's cutting off this hand, and I might want to see that hand a little bit more. I might also uh, want to see where he's belted in. So if I grab this mask and I shrink it this way, and then I go ahead and flatten it again, and I fill, now I should be a little closer to the um, to the orientation, but you can see because of these dots down here, this is where his hand would be, and that um, that's going to be cut off because it fills with those dots. So I can just go grab any other piece that I'd like, and I can extend it down there. 
I'm going to flatten all of it together again. Now I'm going to fill with the photo. And you can see that I've now got that uh, section added in where I want it to be. Now I forgot to uh, change the opacity on this. So let me just back up a step. I do love the undo button because I do want this to be a little bit see-through. And then I'll go ahead and flatten the whole thing again and fill. Now there's one more thing that I do want to do to it and that is I don't want all of this around his face and, and the body of him to be so see-through. So I can do a couple of different things with that. One is I could bring this back in. I could leave it um, not see-through at all. I could flatten it together and then add in his photo, which is going to make a big difference right in that exact area and give me a nice look. Or if I wanted to, I could add a shape and I could draw a shape out around the parts that I care about and then I could add that shape. So let me just show you what I mean by that. If I insert a shape, I'll go ahead and use curved lines and let's say I want more of this hand also. So I can draw out around to the part that I care about. I'm going to create that and if I were to flatten all of this together, now I can fill it with the photo and that gives it yet another look. Now you can see that those lines are really sharp. So one more undo before we finish this up. So I'm going to uh, grab that and I could go to format, filters, soften edge, and I can add a huge degree of softness to the edge and that will help blend it in a little bit better. Just to show you what it all looks like, we'll flatten and we'll fill. So that's one way to make a really cool mask, totally unique, out of whatever elements are in a kit. And you can just continue to play with that to get it exactly the way you want it to be. If I were to decide that I wanted to add something else here for an element, I could easily do that and then flatten and fill it again until I get the look I want. Hope you have fun with this. Take care. Bye.